Jesus said, Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. But what did Jesus really mean by that statement? And how does it apply to Rabbi Zacharias, you may ask? Quite simply, Mr. Zacharias lives a squeaky clean life. No scandals, no adultery, no cheap gift-to-get schemes, no dirty marketing tricks typical of the likes of Perry Stone, Benny Hinn, Kenneth Copeland, Peter Popoff, and the rest of the Trinity Broadcasting Network crowd. No, Ravi is polite, well-spoken, an articulate and compelling orator, and very likable. Yet Ravi seems to have flown under the radar for decades. Why would anyone take the time to look into his background, credentials, affiliations, and theological claims when there haven't been any red flags? I think this may be what Jesus was talking about. In another verse, he reminds us that the Pharisees of his day were clean and tidy on the outside, whited sepulchers and beautiful on the outside. Yet Jesus said, inside, they were full of dead man's bones and uncleanness. To put it in the vernacular, if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. If you are a Ravi Zacharias fan, you should be getting hot under the collar. How dare anyone insinuate that Mr. Zacharias is less than he appears to be? Yet the facts are the facts. And in this article, I'll reference every claim I make and quote the very words of this questionable man. After that, readers can do their own research and come to their own conclusions. Doctor Who? For decades, Mr. Zacharias has promoted himself as Dr. Zacharias, Dr. Ravi Zacharias. And no one has questioned it. Why would they? He seems smart enough and speaks like he ought to be a doctor. But is he really? Plainly, the answer is a resounding no. Ravi has an earned master's degree, nothing more. However, he does have six honorary doctorate degrees, all from Christian colleges and universities, none from any major universities. Further to that, he is not entitled to legitimately use the title doctor or PhD. That is reserved for those who have actually done the rigorous academic work. In fact, most credible universities abide by the Associated Press Style Guide, APSG, which states, Do not use doctor before the name of an individual whose only doctorate is honorary. Asbury University, for example, which bestowed an honorary doctrine on Ravi, says, As a general rule, Asbury University, which utilizes APSG as its foundation, does not refer to a recipient of an honorary doctorate issued by the university as doctor. Until fairly recently, Mr. Zacharias littered his website, print materials, and promotional items with doctor. Recently, he was confronted on his illegitimate use of the title doctor. After that, both his websites and Wikipedia profile were edited removing many of the misleading doctoral references to his name. Despite this, promotional materials for his lectures still refer to him as Dr. Ravi Zacharias. Cambridge Kerfuffle Until recently, Ravi's website and other promotional materials conferred upon him the title Visiting Scholar at Cambridge. Since being confronted on that matter, he has changed the wording, yet his book, The Real Face of Atheism, states on the cover, A Visiting Scholar at Cambridge. Perhaps when his publisher prints the next edition, that too will be corrected. Ravi has been a very bad boy, pretending to be a doctor and Cambridge scholar. So what exactly was Mr. Zacharias doing at Cambridge? The truth is, Ravi attended Ridley Hall in Cambridge. It is not part of Cambridge University. Rather, its affiliation like that of many other organizations is through Cambridge Theological Federation. 
and no affiliate can legitimately equate itself with Cambridge University. This appears to be a well-known fact. Peer or poser. Ravi implies that great universities like Harvard, Yale, and Princeton officially invite him to speak. This is false. No university of that caliber recognizes him academically. In fact, he lectures at those locations by invitations from Christian clubs like Veritas. And they do not officially represent the universities upon whose grounds or vicinities they reside. This makes sense because Ravi does not possess a legitimate doctorate, which would have required him, by doctoral process, to make an original contribution to the body of scholarly knowledge in a particular discipline. This is also supported by the fact that Mr. Zacharias has published nothing in any scholarly peer-reviewed journal such as the American Philosophical Association, the Society of Christian Philosophers, the American Academy of Religion, the Evangelical Philosophical Society, the Evangelical Theological Society, or any other rigid academic forms. To add insult to injury, Zacharias refers to Professor John Lennox as my colleague. Webster's Dictionary defines colleague as follows, co-worker and associate in profession, partner and collaborator. In no way can Professor John Lennox be called Ravi's colleague. Dr. Lennox has an earned PhD in mathematics from the University of Cambridge, an earned doctorate in philosophy from the University of Oxford, and an earned doctorate in science from the University of Cardiff, among other earned MA degrees he possesses. He is a professor of mathematics at the University of Oxford and he is a fellow in mathematics and philosophy of science at Green Templeton College, Oxford University. Also, Lennox has published 70 peer-reviewed articles on mathematics and authored numerous books. He speaks fluent English, Russian, German, French, and Spanish. His academic accomplishments are extensive and can be found on Wikipedia. Lennox is the type of academic that leading universities the world over officially invite to speak. While Ravi is not recognized as an academic by top universities. True Colors A man who calls Joyce Meyer a great Bible teacher is a man who has not read his Bible, is theologically ignorant, is stupid, or has an agenda. Such a man is Ravi Zacharias who appeared on Joyce Meyer's TBN program. For those unfamiliar with Joyce Meyer, she teaches Word of Faith doctrine, claims she does not sin, says Jesus paid for our sins on the cross and in hell, teaches you cannot go to heaven unless you believe Jesus took your place in hell. She claims angels tell her what to preach. She says certain kinds of jewelry attract evil spirits. And the list goes on. Furthermore, the Bible, the King James Version, does not allow women to usurp authority over men in the church. I am baffled that Mr. Zacharias does not know that Joyce Meyer is one of the worst Bible teachers on the planet. She is responsible for perpetuating the same wicked doctrines as Benny Hinn, Creflo Dollar, Kenneth Copeland, John Avancini, Mike Murdoch, and Rodney Howard Brown, just to name a few. Can Ravi actually be so ignorant when he is touted as one of the great apologists of our time? Excuse me, but isn't an apologist supposed to defend the true doctrines of the faith against heretics and liars? Yet Zacharias does no such thing. Rather, he endorses Joyce Meyer. I suspect Joyce is good for Ravi's business. And Ravi runs no small chump change enterprise. I'll cover that shortly. Recently, Mr. Zacharias took a lot of flack for preaching to the Mormon flock at their tabernacle in Utah. Ravi preached on the deity of Christ and insists that never once did he compromise the doctrine of Christ's uncreated nature and the perfection of his life, death, burial, and resurrection. On the surface, that is true. 
Yet, at no time did Mr. Zacharias ever point out the difference between the Mormon Jesus, the spirit brother of Lucifer, and the true biblical Jesus. In fact, Zacharias used language acceptable to both Mormons and Christians. The unanimous applause at the end of the sermon proves that Ravi was well received, and that he said nothing to offend the false Christology of Mormonism. It's not what Mr. Zacharias said to the Mormons that is in question, rather it's the stuff he left out. The details that separate the false Jesus of Mormonism from the true Jesus of the Gospel. The Jesus with the power to save men's souls. If Ravi cared one stitch about the eternal destiny of those lost Mormons in attendance, surely he would have told them that their Jesus can't save. Surely he would have risked offending some of them that they might be saved. Egregious Ecumenicalism Mr. Zacharias is a signatory of the Manhattan Declaration, a movement uniting Orthodox, Catholic, and Evangelical Christians for life, marriage, and religious liberty. Ravi's affiliation is hardly surprising, since he endorses Catholic mystics like Henry Nouwen, Thomas Merton, and Richard Foster, the promoter of contemplative prayer. Further to this, Ravi Zacharias International Ministries Statement of Faith second item reads as follows. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints. Point in question is that Mr. Zacharias makes no effort to distance himself from the Holy Catholic Church. Also, Ravi Zacharias International Ministries employs more than 100 people including professing Catholics. Recent reports state that Rabbi Zacharias Ministries grosses nearly 20 million annually. Mr. Zacharias is a very wealthy man. And what did Christ say about that? Verily I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. The great Christian apologist Ravi Zacharias had been lying for 35 years about his credentials, pretending to hold academic doctorates and referring to himself as a Cambridge-educated professor at Oxford. Now I'm a professor at Oxford. His evangelical Christian publishers and business colleagues knew about his deceptions, but Mr. Zacharias generated over $40 million a year in donations alone and was too big to fail. So they turned the other way and continued showering him with awards, speaking engagements, and book contracts. But then something happened, and this time it was different. This time it was about sex. In the summer of 2017, Mr. Zacharias landed himself in federal litigation with a married woman with whom he'd been having an online relationship. When this young woman told him that she would confess the affair to her husband, the evangelist committed the blunder that will bring his empire down. He threatened suicide, and he did it in writing. I notified Mr. Zacharias that I had acquired a copy of his suicide note, and the next morning I received this anonymous threat. They are coming for you. The Ravi Zacharias story is ugly, and there are good reasons powerful people have kept it a secret for decades. But this new development threatened to blow their cover, and when it did, it would expose not just another corrupt, smiling preacher, but religious cynicism and unbelief in the highest echelons of the evangelical business world. This book blows that cover. Based on three years of research by attorney Steve Boffman, that's me, and meticulously documented with communications from Cambridge and Oxford, Zacharias' own press releases, excerpts from the federal lawsuit, and more, Cover Up in the Kingdom presents all who care about integrity and Christian apologetics with evidence that demands a verdict. Wherever you are in your faith journey, keep asking questions because questions are the way you get to know someone, and Christianity says that God is personal and that he wants to know us. Trending Questions is back. Join us for the next part in this ongoing series from the Zacharias Institute, when Sam Aubrey will be addressing the question, how can I know my gender, at a live event on February the 15th. Sam is a Bible teacher and speaker. 
and brings heart and clarity to this challenging subject. You don't want to miss it. You can hear Sam's message in person at the Zacharias Institute or watch the live stream online. For more information, go to rzim.org forward slash CI.